Okay guys, this is going to go into the true story section. Now I've already told this story once before, for some reason I cannot find it in my YouTube channel anymore. I have no idea what happened to it. It just um, utterly disappeared one day. But it's important that I go ahead and put this back in. So people uh, can at least have access to it because I've had a few people ask me about it and they couldn't find it anymore. So here it is. Um, now this is something that happened to me. Um, it was probably around when I was eight or nine years old. I don't remember what brought me in to the hospital that day. Um, it could have been one of my, you know, couple of operations that I had back then, uh, you know, I had a pretty severe urinary tract infection one time, I died of pneumonia one time, um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank God I only died one time, um, I had a multitude of things that happened, not nearly as many as my brother did, because my brother, uh, you know, he was brought into this world paraplegic. Of course, most of you know that my brother is no longer with us. Um, but I didn't have nearly as many uh, medical problems back then as he did. So I can't really complain too much. But nonetheless, I remember the big problem on this particular day was the fact that the doctors and the nurses were all talking to my parents about the fact that their anesthetics was not putting me down okay so they needed me to go to sleep in order for them to do whatever it was that they were going to do like I said I cannot for the life of me remember what the problem was that day but they had given me almost everything that they could give me and they were getting no results and so, I remember sitting, uh, first of all, in a room by myself for a while. Uh, my parents came in, periodically talked to me. Um, and I remember that they were trying to comfort me for some reason, but I didn't know what was even going on, so I'm not for sure what was happening. Um, nonetheless, I do remember them um, coming in there on a multitude of occasions and either uh, making me take something orally or they uh, they injected me with some stuff, wouldn't work. So finally, they decided um, on trying to use nitrous in order to get me to finally go out, along with all the other stuff that they gave me. Now. I'm not for sure, I've had this sort of thing my entire life, I'm not for sure what's going on with my body uh, to where I, when, whenever they use anesthetics or whatnot on me that it just doesn't work, but um, I do remember at a certain point that pain meds and stuff like that, that sort of stuff would, for the most part, uh, knock me out after a certain point. Anyway. Here is the memory that I had of that particular day. And the experience is always something that stood out to me more than any other experience that I ever had while in the hospital, with the exception of the time that I died from pneumonia. But I still don't even really have that much of a memory of what happened in the hospital because when I died of pneumonia, I was actually in the bathtub of my own house and they had dumped a ton of ice on me just a ton of ice on me and you've already got that story to to reflect back on if you ever want to watch it just go back and watch that but in this particular case I remember laying down and there were three nurses and a doctor that came in periodically I remember laying down and I was on my back and uh, 
basically looking up at the ceiling and then of course you could you know you got your side to side so you can see uh, the nurses over here people over there doing their stuff running back and forth and they told me that they were getting ready to do something okay and they put the mask on me one time okay and they were having me breathe it in and she told me to count backwards from 10 nothing happened all right um then I remember them again kind of going back and forth talking to each other um and then they came back with the mask again and they may have actually uh put something in my drip at that time because I do remember having something hooked up to my arm um, and I do remember that there was a pump next to me but they came over and they had me count backwards again so this particular time this is where things got weird this is my first experience ever seeing anything like the matrix okay this is my first experience with it um, so they're having me count back again. And this seemed like it, I'm telling you, this 10 seconds seemed like it took five minutes. So I'm counting backwards from 10, nine, eight. And then I remember right around eight or seven, I watched what looked like lights coming in from the ceiling. Um, but we're talking in perfect straight lines coming down. Um, and then I remember seeing lights crisscrossing from the walls and from the ceiling. I watched these things basically uh, form fit. They started wrapping around the nurse that was right next to me. I remember seeing the doctor over to my far right. And then I remember seeing a nurse basically at the foot of the bed. There was someone to my left, couldn't see him. But I'm watching this come in. And again, this stuff seems like it's it's wrapping around everybody and everything. I'm watching it. I remember looking at my feet, same thing. I could see uh, the light grids doing that. They were um, wrapping around my legs, the bed. Uh, it looked like it was coming up like this. The other thing that was really unnerving uh, was that their voices, even though I could still hear them talking, their voices now at this point didn't no longer took on the sound of this organic voice that you hear coming out of my mouth. It turned into a computerized vocal sound. So um, I don't know if you guys remember the movie The Matrix, and then we're talking about the first one when um, they gave him the red pill, and then he freaks out, starts screaming, and then you hear, he screams, and then all of a sudden you hear his voice go into this computerized tone. It was like, like that. I know that's a weird sound, but whatever I just did, but that's the sound that started happening when I heard them conversing back and forth with each other, all right? Um, and not just that, but we're talking like, I don't know if you ever heard those computerized voices, but it was every bit of that. Now, at this point, my little mind is thinking that I'm seeing monsters, that I'm hearing monsters. And I had nothing to compare it to at that time because there was no movie The Matrix. There was no internet. There was none of that stuff, okay? Um, and I would later describe that. Uh, I think it was like, the next day or the day after. I can't remember what happened, but um, I remember describing that to my parents and I told them that I thought that the nurse and the doctor were monsters, that they became monsters. And like I said, uh, when you don't have the vocabulary as a child and when you don't have any sort of an experience to relate it to, that's the only thing that you can come up with. Well, um, now at this point, I remember I started screaming and my own voice at that point also sounded computer tone which also freaked me out and the nurse I remember looking over at me and she's now looking over at me basically face to face eye to eye maybe within uh, 
two feet from each other as she's looking down. And I remember her saying, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? Why are you screaming? And then I watch my my vision go out just like a, an old television tube set. It just went down to a fine point and then I was, a, I was gone, I was asleep. But um, it was not only an unnerving experience when you experience that as a child and when there is nothing that you can compare it to, um, I'm going to tell you that um, even though that was my first experience with the Matrix, I would have called that definitely a negative experience as the way that I went out. And that was something that stuck with me and it will stick with me probably until lifetimes from now. Hopefully, I, you know, this is my last lifetime. Um, <laughs> I, I have many, 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 many memories of other lifetimes of working and doing uh, the type of job that I'm doing now in many other lifetimes. And I do know that I volunteered to come in to do the work that I'm doing. I've been doing it for a long time. Nonetheless, that was my first actual experience in this lifetime and being face to face with the computerized uh, simulation reality that you know we refer to as the Matrix. Now, when you're a kid and you don't know who you are and you have no iota of an idea what this place actually is, um, it will set a tone and. Fortunately, that was something that stuck with me the way it did because later on I could, you know, with all the experiences that I started having in my 20s and then in my 30s and so forth, that memory would serve definitely as a, you know, a marker of sorts that says, yeah, you know, uh, you've been experiencing this for a while. Um, and it would be a thing that really helped to shape my viewpoints and the way that I teach, the way that I operate, uh, all the stuff that I do uh, on my spare time when I'm practicing, and again, when I'm teaching. I hope no cars are coming. Okay. It's kind of, it's kind of uh, icy out here, so and I wasn't able to see through this window in order to check. Anyhow. I guess that's none of your concern. But I want you to imagine that idea. A, number one, imagine you lived in the time where, first and foremost, the internet wasn't there. There was none of that. So you, you couldn't just go online, look up uh, experience with light grids, blah, blah, blah. What does that mean? You had no one to share that information with, which, you know, that carried on in my 20s because even still, uh, my early 20s, the internet was just in its infant stages, all right? So I think, what, 1991 is when the internet basically got released, but um, the early days of the internet, it was a whole lot different than it is now. And so, uh, Google was not really a thing. You can't just Google stuff. And imagine having an experience that was so incredibly uh, explosive to the mind, reality. And a lot of people would say, okay, well, yeah, that was just, um, you were just on, you know, a narcotic. And this is the reason why your brain perceived what it did. Well, I would argue and say, no, as a person, especially in my 20s, who had been on plenty of narcotics, okay, in my 20s, I never had an experience like that, no, um, and as someone who in my 20s also played with a lot of nitrous, that never happened after, I never had an experience where the light streams just came in, now, there were many times if I was on, say, a hallucinogen, an actual hallucinogen 
that sure I had those experiences and now I see the matrix as clearly as you guys see a stop sign or a stoplight or mailbox okay and you know sometimes I leave it on most of the time I turn it off okay so fortunately I have the ability to turn on these filters where I can see it or I choose not to see it but as a child that was the first time and then I didn't see it again until much later on until again like I said in my 20s where I actually had uh, you know access to hallucinogens but it would be fleeting so I would see it for a little bit gone see it for a little bit gone but nothing that ever stuck and would definitively tell me oh yeah you know what you're actually seeing what this place is composed of you're actually seeing the light grids that compose this whole place e equals mc squared matter okay so um, again, there was no rubric to compare it to whatsoever. So I remember that being an especially defining experience that was also extremely frightening at the time. And now it's just my way of life. Now it's just something that, you know, I accept as part of reality. Um, and trust me when I say, uh, there's a lot of people out there that's, you know, well, it was just a movie, it just blah, blah, blah. Well, trust me when I say this, you don't get the type of results that I get with the practice that I do if that were the case. You know, I get extremely uh, concrete results, it happens every time, which is the reason why we can do the seminars that we do, which we're no longer doing now, by the way. Seminars are a thing of the past. It's done. It's over. It's gone. It's going to be gone until restrictions lift, until people are no longer scared to travel, until this whole COVID thing, people have gotten past the idea that they are in some zombie pandemic. It was never like that. It was never that bad. We make it bad by putting that type of attention to it. We make it bad by focusing on things and then allowing the media to uh, create that fear for us. Okay, so it's as bad as you want it to be or it's as benign as you choose it to be. Has it killed people? Yes. In fact, uh, my sister recently uh, passed after having gotten the vaccine. Now we're not gonna go into that and make that a whole ordeal, but I am going to say that, do I think COVID is real? Yeah. Do I think uh, the vaccines have caused damage? Yes. Okay, so I think everything, you know, has had its place and has had its effects. Now, with that said, move that out of the way. Um, like I said, maybe one day we will kick in the, the uh, seminars again. It was something that I truly love doing, but it's also something that has uh, brought in a lot of uh, problems. So, but I can tell you this, every single seminar that we did was amazing. We loved meeting everyone that we met. We had the time of our lives uh, teaching the people that came out. And if you were to contact any of those people, I guarantee you they're gonna tell you they had the time of their lives. It was always fun watching people just light up and, and you know, seeing something for the first time that being very new to them. There is nothing cooler, nothing. Sun coming in. I may have taken the wrong turn. Hoping I didn't. And if I did, God only knows where I'm at. <laughs> anyway, doesn't look very familiar. Oh, wait, I think it is starting to look familiar. All right, we're good. So, anyway. 
that was my first experience with the Matrix. It definitely was not my last, but uh, after that particular point, like I said, I didn't start having experiences with anything even remotely like that until uh, my 20s. And that was a very defining moment for me because it has honestly shaped everything that I do now. It's a shame to me that um, the majority of humanity who's ever walked this planet has never had an experience like that. It's a shame that this place remains so elusive because it's an illusion. It truly is an illusion. You know, most of you guys aren't aware that your eyes only see a certain bandwidth, that your ears only hear within a certain bandwidth. There are things going on at all times in front of you and around you that you have no clue about just because your eyes and ears are only susceptible to hearing X amount. That is, to me, like one of the worst things. And given that, a good portion of reality remains completely um, elusive to human perception. Very sad. My hope is that, you know, given what I do, is that people start expanding that awareness because by doing that, it expands your perception. Your brain begins operating on higher and even lower frequencies that allow you the ability to access more and more of that information that remains hidden from you. So, nonetheless, that was it. That was my first experience with the Matrix. Um, I really hope that this video uh, opened your eyes. If it didn't, that's fine. If you believe it, fantastic. If you don't, you can't do anything about that. But what I will say is this. A person's disbelief in someone else's experience does not erase that person's experience. And the idea that a drug was the thing that uh, was the doorway that opened my mind doesn't mean that it was just a drug. What it really means is that it allowed my brain to operate on a different frequency that allowed me to see what was actually there. Those of you who do know this, remember, E equals MC squared, okay? This whole place is made of energy. This whole place is compressed energy that is vibrating and oscillating at the speed of light squared. So this stuff, all of it, everything that you look at, everything that you see, everything that you hear, they are frequencies that are compressed. It is energy, it is photons, it is light, okay? And so all of those frequencies that I was just telling you about that remain hidden or you can't hear, they're all still there. It's just that your brain and your mind doesn't perceive it. So, as I've told other people before, and I don't recommend doing this, by the way, but I am going to say that there are certain drugs out there that the specific task, the spe excuse me, the specific job for them is for them to open up perceptions and doorways that remain normally hidden. A lot of people will call it the occult. The only thing the occult means is the hidden, okay? So, things to consider, much love.